Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dwayne's World. So it's been about eight months since I actually picked up my rotary scissors. You wanna find out what I think about them since I've owned them? Well, you better stay tuned. So welcome back to season two, episode 30 here on Dwayne's World. And you may be curious, Dwayne, you just started this episode and why do you look so winded? Well, it's because of the fact that I actually got in a mow and I'm gonna show you guys what that mow looked like in just a minute here. But today's video is really gonna circle around my rotary scissors. Right, so before I get into my eight month review of those rotary scissors, I went ahead and did a quick mow because I wanted to give you guys a quick update of what the lawn looks like since you guys had last seen it. As you remember, I broke out the GM1000 and did a hard cut on my lawn to be able to reset the height of cut to three quarter inch. So with that, I put a little bit on video for you guys. So let's go ahead and take a look. So again, I just put a little bit of the mowing on video for you guys, uh, just so I can get into the actual rotary scissor review here. But let me go ahead and give you guys a shot of what the lawn looks like. Absolutely looking great. Look at that color. I still do have some scalp action, as you guys can see here, that still needs to be able to heal up. In about another week or so, it definitely will be looking much more on point. Now, as my stripe action, I will say, is not necessarily looking as good as it has in some of my prior videos. However, I'm really happy with the color and the way the lawn is currently looking. All right, guys, so I picked up my rotary scissors right around Cyber Monday of 2022. So when talking about the rotary scissors, as you guys have seen in some of my previous videos, you know, I have featured and shared my opinion on these rotary scissors. However, I thought, you know what, I've never really done a dedicated video to actually a review of owning these rotary scissors for the last eight months. You know, I think sometimes when you do a review of a product, you know, initially you have first impressions. And I did do a first impressions video on my channel if you guys want to take a look and I'll go ahead and link it at the end of this video. However, after owning a product for for multiple months, I think it gives you a much better idea of whether you really, really like it or whether or not it was worth its investment. Now, one of the things I will say about the rotary scissors is they are expensive. And one of the reasons why I picked it up was because of the price that I was able to get at the time I decided to purchase them. I purchased them during Cyber Monday of 2022, and the rotary scissors at that time were on sale for $200. It was about a $70 to $100 discount, depending on where you were picking them up. At the same time, I also picked up the Ego attachment to be able to adapt those rotary scissors to my Ego trimmer. When I was looking at the Ego attachment, that also was on sale for about $99, where it normally goes for 130. Now these prices that I'm giving you are from 2022. So since then the prices may have went up, they may have went down or fluctuated somewhere in between. However, even though I got a really good price on those rotary scissors, you know, I still want to be able to tell you guys my honest opinion on whether or not it was worth the particular investment because it is a lot of money. So with that, let me go ahead and dive a little bit closer in and give you guys an overview of the rotary scissors. All right guys, so I just want to do an overview here of my actual rotary scissors and actually talk to you guys about why I chose to go with the setup that you're currently looking at. One of the things I will say is if you are new to the power rotary scissors, there are other manufacturers you can actually go with, not only the manufacturer that I have shown here. The one I have is made by a company called Terry, but there are other manufacturers as well that are all around the same price. One of the things I will say when doing my research, I have not necessarily seen a difference in the build quality or the quality of cut when it comes to different manufacturers. So it's ultimately going to be up to you guys what manufacturer you choose to go with. And I'm sure price and other things are going to be deciding factors for why you choose one brand over another. Now, one of the questions I do get is, Dwayne, why did you choose to go with an Ego setup when it comes to the rotary scissors? 
Now, one of the things I will say is regardless of whether or not you go with an Ego, a Ryobi, or a Milwaukee, for example, one of the things I'm a big fan of when it comes to the rotary scissors is using a battery-powered system. The reason why is because battery-operated equipment tends to have much more torque when it comes to actually operating and powering your rotary scissors. It absolutely will work with a gas-powered trimmer. However, I think the instant torque you get from an electric trimmer tends to work much better when it comes to the actual power rotary scissors. Now, just for those of you that are new to the actual power rotary scissors, I want to make sure you understand this. Whenever you're looking at the pricing of the rotary scissors online, all you're purchasing is the actual head unit. It does not include any type of trimmer or attachments that you might need in order to make these things work. Now, some people specifically have asked me, Dwayne, why Ego? In addition to the battery option that I mentioned earlier, is Ego is a product I've already invested in and I have other tools already in their lineup. So it just made sense for me, because of the fact that I already had an Ego trimmer, to go ahead and just purchase an optional shaft here to be able to adapt my actual rotary scissors. Let's take a little bit of a closer look here at the actual rotary scissor blades, just so you get a better idea of what you're looking at. Right. All right, guys, so the way that the power rotary scissors actually work is very similar to a pair of scissors. If you look, there's actual little blades here that actually cross each other that actually cut like a pair of scissors. This is why the power rotary scissors work much better than your traditional string trimmer. There's an analogy that's out there which I think really accurately depicts the difference between rotary scissors and your traditional trimmer. If you think about the difference between an actual rotary lawnmower and a real mower, the cutting action is very different. With the rotary lawnmower, it actually spins to be able to cut the grass, and in fact, you're actually chopping away at the grass. The trimmer actually works in that very same fashion. When it comes to the rotary scissors, just like a real mower, it actually acts like a pair of scissors, where you have two blades that come in contact with one another to actually cut the grass. And that's why you get so much better of a superior cut when it comes to using the power rotary scissors. Now, one thing I will say is that the rotary scissors are much heavier than a traditional trimmer head, as you can imagine. However, one of the things that I really like about the power rotary scissors is the design of underneath the actual unit. If you look here, it's almost like there's a bowl that's actually at the bottom. And what I find that whenever you're using the rotary scissors, this really kind of glides on top of the grass and really helps you be able to control the rotary scissors whenever you're using them. And even though there's extra weight, you tend not to feel it because of that actual plate. The nice thing about the power rotary scissors is you can purchase other blades to replace these. In fact, there are other blades on the market that are actually longer if you want to use your power rotary scissors to actually edge. Now, when it comes to my rotary scissors, I really like them to do just trim work, and I let my edger do the work when it comes to edging my lawn. Now, that's where you may want to consider looking at purchasing the optional longer blades because they may work better whenever you're doing an edging. Now, these will absolutely work as well, just giving you guys a couple of different options. All right, so as I'm continuing to do this video, the comparison of a real mower compared to power rotary scissors is becoming much, much more apparent. Meaning, when it comes to maintenance, if you think about it, a real mower has a lot more maintenance than your traditional lawnmower. Power rotary scissors has a lot more maintenance than your traditional string trimmer. So one of the things you absolutely want to do, just like you do on a real mower, is you want to make sure you protect the blades on the real mower, just like you will on the power rotary scissors. So what is the way to do that? Well, most of you guys do have some WD-40 laying around in your garage, and this works great as a lubricant to be able to protect the blades when they're not in use. All right, so a question I get from time to time is, Dwayne, what type of lubricant do you recommend? And I recommend this product called Fluid Film. Now, I use this both on my real mowers and my power rotary scissors. Where I learned about Fluid Film was actually recommended to me by a fellow YouTuber named Sonny Bermuda. Now, if you haven't now, checked out Sonny Bermuda's YouTube channel, he's got a great channel with a lot of great information. So head over to his channel and check out his content because I think you guys will be really surprised in a good way of all the awesome things he features on his channel. Now, one of the things I will say about the fluid film is it does have a little bit of a unique smell, but outside of that, it works really, really well to be able to protect the blades from any rust or corrosion and acts as a really good lubricant. You can absolutely tell a difference anytime you are using your fluid film because it really helps quiet the blades and makes them perform that much better.
All right, guys, so one of the things I'm also going to do today is I'm going to grease the actual fittings here that I'll get to in just a second. Now, you can actually do a complete teardown of the power rotary scissors if you really are looking to overhaul them and really start from scratch again when it comes to the actual grease on the inside. Now, for today's video, all I'm going to do is be able to open up the grease ports, add in some new grease, and show you guys what type of grease I want to use when I'm doing this type of maintenance. All right, so I basically have a little tool here with a little Allen on the end. I'm going to go ahead and just loosen these bolts here. There's one there. And that one there. All right, guys, so now that we got the bolts off here, we're going to go ahead and grease it. And if you look at the instructions, the manufacturer calls for what they refer to as an EPO grease whenever you're greasing your power rotary scissors. Now, one of the things I will say is this bottle of grease will set you back about $30. I'll go ahead and link it in the description below. I picked it up on Amazon, and it's by a manufacturer called Argo Parts. Again, I wanted to make sure I used what the manufacturer recommended, and this is the one I chose to go with. So with that, let's go ahead and fill up those ports. Now, if you look here, I don't know if it's coming out on the camera, but there's little lines here. I'm going to go ahead and actually cut it above that line just so I don't have too big of an opening. But that is something you're going to have to do whenever you are opening up your grease. So basically all I'm doing is filling it on each side till it basically spills out. And there, I think that side is full. And that side looks full as well. So now let me go ahead and just wipe off the excess. Actually, it looks like quite a bit went in, so it might have been a little bit low on the actual grease. Now, I, think the manuf now, I believe the manufacturer recommends greasing about every 10 hours. And each time I use these, to be honest with you, I probably only use them for about 10, 15 minutes. All right, so now with that, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws back in, but there is one other grease port that a lot of people don't realize, and let me show you that in just a minute. All right, so each of those are tightened down. Now, the other grease port that a lot of people don't realize is also on the side here. So we gotta go ahead and back out that screw, and we'll go ahead and grease that side as well. So the socket I'm going with is about a 5 16 here. Got the screw out there. Now we'll go ahead and grease up that port. All right, so I went ahead and just turned it on its side here, and we'll go ahead and just add grease. Oh, looks like a little too much came out there. All right, so it looks like I filled it up pretty good there. Actually, a little bit too much, but that's okay. Now that I know that it's full. All right, so that's tight. And that's how you actually maintain your rotary scissors. So you put the towel down. Let me go ahead and actually just spray this lubricant here on my blades. And then we'll go ahead and start them up here. Make sure everything's running the way it should. things I just wanted to mention is I am wearing a mic right now and whenever I'm depressing on the rotary scissors that's how loud they are so they are absolutely much louder than your traditional string trimmer just want to make sure you guys are aware of that all right guys so one of the things I'll mention here is even though I've owned my power rotary scissors for eight months it has not been an eight months full of use you know I probably only started using them really started using them in the month of March you know when my backyard started to green up Yes, I did do the overseeding fall, you know, perennial rye project, but my front lawn is only 700 square feet. I swear whenever I would use them, I'd only use them for like a minute or two. Now in total, 10 to 15 minutes total use whenever I've run them. So when you kind of add it all up, I don't know, maybe five to 10 hours of use so far. All right, so with that, let me go ahead and show you guys the rotary scissors in action and give you my comments on the good and the bad. Yes, there is a bad. <laughs> so let's take a look. Guys, just in this first video clip, I just kind of want to point out how easy it is to actually use the rotary scissors. You know, I mentioned that bowl-shaped bottom. that really helps the rotary scissors glide along the grass, which I absolutely love. 
All right, guys, I just wanted to point something out that a viewer actually brought up to me, which I wanted to make sure that everybody understood this. I had purchased my Eagle products. This string trimmer right here was the first one I actually purchased. I really liked it because of the carbon fiber shaft. It was really lightweight. And that was prior to me even thinking about purchasing the rotary scissors. Now, one of the things that I thought about when I purchased the rotary scissors, is I thought, well, maybe I'm going to adapt my rotary scissors to my carbon fiber shaft. However, because of the fact I had an edger, I felt it was probably just better for me to buy a separate attachment, which I used for the rotary scissors. Now, one of the things I didn't even think about when trying to adapt the power rotary scissors to the carbon fiber shaft is it won't work. And the reason why it won't work is because of the fact that this has a drive-by wire, meaning there is no actual shaft. So if you ever are looking at purchasing the rotary scissors for an Ego, you have to make sure you have the multi-head unit, otherwise it won't work. So in this next video clip, I want to talk about the height of cut on the rotary scissors. On this particular video clip, this is one I had actually done the hard cut using the GM1000, cutting at a half an inch. Now, although I don't really know exactly how low the rotary scissors are cutting, I can tell you as I'm actually trimming here, I was having a hard time getting it down to a half an inch. Now, other people may have a different experience, but this is the one of the things I've noticed when I'm actually using the rotary scissors. Anytime you scalp, it is hard to be able to get to a lower height of cut. If I had to guess, I'd probably say the rotary scissors are cutting at about 5 eighths. All right, guys, so I gotta tell you, I absolutely love this camera angle because it really gives you guys an idea of what it's like to use the rotary scissors. Now, one of the things I will tell you, and this may sound a little odd, but your results of your rotary scissors may actually depend on how your Bermuda turf is set adjacent to your concrete. And what I mean by that is as I'm continuing to use the rotary scissors here, on this part of my lawn, as you guys can see, it's kind of hard to tell from that angle, but that part actually drops below the level of the concrete, meaning the Bermuda turf actually rides lower than the height of the concrete. Now, as I'm continuing to use the rotary scissors here, this part of my lawn is actually above the concrete. And you're going to be much happier with the result anytime your Bermuda turf actually rides higher than the concrete. Now, as I continue to go along here, you're going to see an area where the concrete is actually much higher than the actual Bermuda turf. All right, so this is kind of where I'm talking about where the Bermuda turf actually is a lot lower than the concrete, as you guys can see there. And the problem that you're going to have is you actually leave a lot of actual stragglers. Now, even when I'm mowing up against my son's playhouse here in the slide, you notice that I keep going back and forth along that slide because of the fact that I'm leaving a lot of stragglers. And that is probably one of the downfalls to the rotary scissors as opposed to using an actual string trimmer is really being able to get up against those edges. So in this last video clip, I just want to talk to you guys about what is the best feature of the rotary scissors. And that is simply the fact that it's hard to scalp your lawn, which is the whole point of why you'd want to pick these up. However, with that being said, it does leave a lot of extra clippings on your lawn that you are going to have to clean up, mow, or blow off when you use your rotary scissors. All right, so here's the real question. Dwayne, would you rebuy your power rotary scissors? And yes, ultimately the answer is yes. However, I would still have a hard time, and I still would probably cry at the price that they are today. Because I won't say, even though they do make the lawn look better and really kind of gives you that final detail that you want, I feel like I could probably get away with the string trimmer as well. But I think that's because of my application. If you have a lawn where you have a very difficult time getting a real mower through it. Maybe you have landscape rocks. Maybe you have different trees. Maybe you have different obstacles in your lawn. And it's really hard to get a real mower in some of those areas. Or, or, maybe this is the better way of answering that question, is if I only had my Greens Master, I would absolutely have to have these rotary scissors. Because on the other residential real mowers, where you can get really close to the edge, I think 90% of the work is already done. But when it comes to a greens master, where you tend to have to mow further away from a fence or mow further away from a curbing, you absolutely need something to be able to clean up that part of the lawn. And that's where a trimmer 
you're going to have a tough time with and you're probably going to end up scalping your lawn and it's not going to look so good. However, with the power rotary scissors, you can really help blend it all together and it's harder to tell where are you real mode and where you use those rotary scissors. So that's, I think, one of the key things is that depending on what type of mower you have may determine whether or not the rotary scissors are really a necessity for you or not. So if you have a Toro Greensmaster, absolutely. A John Deere, absolutely. So if you have a Greens mower, absolutely. But you could probably get away with not having them if you got a California trimmer, a McLean, a True Cut, where you could really mow very close to the concrete there. So, but if that's a lot more difficult for you and you have to have more spacing there, pick up a pair of rotary scissors. Now, with all that being said, I absolutely have enjoyed the rotary scissors. I absolutely love them. It is a piece of my arsenal. It would be hard for me to give them up. And I absolutely do not regret that decision in purchasing them. So next time, if you happen to find them on sale, it absolutely is something you should consider or at the regular price, it may still be worth it for you. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And as always, be excellent and party on.